Hey, how are you? Well, this week I'm building two top bar beehives. And the nice thing about building two projects that are exactly the same is I've already got one started so I can bring the camera over, kind of point out what I've done so far, and then we can go build the next one together. It kind of reminds me of how Norm used to build stuff. He used to build two of the same exact projects and be able to refer to the one that I guess he built the week before. So that's kind of nice. So uh, before we get started, first let's take a look at some of the materials that you'll need. I'm referring to this as the main body of the hive. And for this design, you'll need two pieces of wood for the front and the back that measure 12 and 3 quarters by 42 inches. I'm referring to this part and this part as the inside sides. And you'll need two that measure 12 and 3 quarters by 12 inches. And then for the outside sides, maybe I should move the camera. That's this part right here. You'll need two that measure 15 inches by 12 inches. If you're wondering about the dark color of the wood that I'm using, this is thermally modified poplar. And the reason why I'm using this wood is because I'm allergic to pine. If I wasn't allergic to pine, then I would build the beehives out of pine. Now you'll be able to get all of the parts that I just mentioned out of one 1x6x12 and one 1x8x12 by, by simply gluing and joining the boards together. I've already joined the boards together and cut them to length and width. And the next step is to cut the angles on the inside sides. For this angle, I'm measuring from the edge of the board and putting a mark at 3 and 3 quarters on each side. Then I'm using a straight edge, aligning it on the mark and at the very corner and tracing a line. I've clamped the straight edge to the bottom of the side and I'm tracing the line and I'll cut this angle using the table saw. The reason why I want this to be flush straight across is it will make it easier to fit the door to the bottom of the hive. I've drilled and countersunk holes so I can screw everything together, but before I do that, I'm going to drill the entrance holes, and I want to find the center, which is 21 inches, put a mark, and then measure 4 inches over from the center on each side. And then I'll measure up from the bottom 2 inches, and that's where I'll drill the holes. And I'm using a 1 inch drill bit. If you have a nail gun, it makes it a little bit easier to tack everything in place with just one or two nails and then screw the boards together. The real strength is going to come from the screws. I'm using inch and five eighth screws and I wanted to point out that notice the grain is going in this direction. That way I'm screwing into the cross grain and not the end grain. You get a much stronger joint by screwing into the cross grain. The next step is to add the outside end piece. This is the piece that measures 12 inches by 15 inches. And again, I'm going to glue it and tack it to the hive with a few nails and then screw it to the hive. Now I should add that I'm not adding a viewing window to either of these hives. 
and that's because I found the viewing window to be more trouble than it's worth. The bees would attach comb to the window, which made it hard to see in the window, and also would stick the bars to the hive and made it difficult to pull the bars out of the hive. So it's a much easier build without the window, so I'm just going to go without it. Now I'm attaching a cleat to the side of the hive, and this is the cleat that the roof will rest on. I'm using a piece of material that's three quarters of an inch as a spacer, and as long as I'm flush at the top here, then the cleat is in the right spot. Okay, well now we're moving on to the legs, and I'm using 2x4s for the legs. The measurement of the leg is 34 and a quarter inches from the long point of the angle to the short point, and it's a 22 degree angle at the top and at the bottom. Once you cut your first leg, use that leg as a pattern for your next three. Now I'm measuring in on the cleat that I attached earlier to hold the roof, and I'll put a mark at seven and a half inches, which is the center. Now I'm going to hold the long point of the angle at that mark. This is the long point of the leg, and I'll hold the leg in place with a clamp. I've made sure that the point of the leg is right at the mark, and that the top of the leg is nice and tight against the cleat. Next, I'll attach the leg with two screws. I screwed the legs to the hive really just to keep them in position. Next, I'll drill 3 8 inch holes for carriage bolts. You'll need four inch long bolts for the upper bolts and three inch long bolts for the lower ones. And a washer and a nut for each bolt. I just finished attaching the screen to the bottom of the hive and I'm using number eight hardware cloth. And that means there's eight little squares in a square inch and the squares measure an eighth of an inch wide. And you want to use that because I made the mistake last year of using number four because I couldn't find number eight. And I thought by doubling the screen up that would work. Well, it turns out the bees could get in and out of the hive anyway. And as they were entering the hive, it was knocking the pollen off of their legs. So I ended up having to change the screen in the middle of the season, getting underneath the hive, and it was kind of a pain. So the next step is to attach the door. You're going to get the door out of a 1x8. Just cut a piece at 42 inches, and you'll attach it to the back of the hive with three hinges. I'm using a piece of 8 inch plywood as a shim to add a little ventilation to the hive when the door is closed. Once I've attached the door, I'll remove the piece of plywood. I placed the hinges four inches in from the ends and one at the center. Now I'm gonna spin the hive around and add the gate hooks that will keep the door closed during the winter.
I'm adding the gate hooks eight inches in from the side of the door and I'm going to pre-drill for these. Now we're moving on to the roof and the first thing we'll need to do is pad out the cleat that acts like a stop. You can see how the roof stops at this cleat, but we need to pad this one out a little bit, the side that the hinge is attached to, so there's enough clearance for the roof to go up and down without any interference. I've ripped the shim at a quarter of an inch. It measures an inch wide and 15 inches long. And I'll attach it with a little glue and some nails. Next we'll move on to the roof ends and you'll need two pieces at 20 inches long by five and a half inches wide. I've already cut my boards to length and width and the first step is to mark a line at the center which is 10 inches and then mark a line at an inch and three quarters up from the bottom. You'll do this on both sides. And then connect the lines with a straight edge and trace a line. I've clamped the board to my work table and I'll make this cut with a circular saw. After I cut the roof ends, I ripped the roof supports on the table saw. This is a 20 degree angle and all the measurements are on the parts list that you'll be able to find on my website. And the parts list is in the order of the build. So it should be pretty easy to follow along. The next step is to attach the roof supports to the roof ends. Again, I'm tacking the parts in place and then I'll secure them with a screw or two screws in this case. The distance between the outside supports is 17 and a half inches. I attach the inside supports three quarters of an inch from the peak of the roof. Whenever you make a top bar hive, you want to make sure that your inside measurements are all the same. And that way if the colony expands and you want to split the hive, the comb will fit into the new hive. This is a comb that the bees made last year in the hive that I built last year and you can see it fits perfectly in the new hive. Okay, well, that's as far as I'm gonna get with this video today. I will make a part two because there's just a, a lot of things that I don't wanna rush through. And as soon as part two is finished, I'll put a link on the screen and just click on the link and it'll take you right there. Don't forget I've got plans. You can find these on my website. If you've got any questions on what I've done so far, you might be wondering, why am I using regular poplar? Well, I ran out of the thermally modified poplar. But if you have any other questions, just leave them in the comments, and I'll do a, a follow-up video on Tuesday. And if this is the first time you've tuned into my channel, I'd love it if you'd subscribe or share this video on your social media or give me the thumbs up. And you can check out my eBay store for shirts like this and maybe something else from the studio. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you soon.